What's going on, everybody? You are now tuning to another episode of Everyday Heroes, and we got Real Name Winton, JB Written, and Jason from the We Are Not Okay podcast on the show. And before we get into anything, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the show. We got a lot of good stuff coming to you. iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, uh, Speaker, all that stuff, we on there. Go ahead, Google us. We on Google as well. Um, first of all, JB, how was your week? Good, brother. Thank you for asking. Really good week. Everything's uh, still, we still keeping the fight going, marching peacefully. Great week, man. Great week. All right, all right, and Jason, how was your week? Look, I'm going a, I'm to a not give the typical answer that we do during our difficult times. I'm going to be straight up with you. Um, I'm still not okay, uh, but I progress and I get better each day. Um, it is a, a burden that we carry as an African-American community, and uh, that burden has been tested over the past couple of weeks. Ooh, that was tough. That was good. Good. All right, and me... I have no struggles being African American yeah. at all. <laughs> he said, "How you doing?" That man had a good answer, boy. Yeah, I, I got no struggles and I got no worries as an African American male right now. Straight out here, bro. We, we live none, none whatsoever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and get into uh, some comments that Roger Goodell from the NFL, the NFL commissioner, um. You know, um, definitely did not support the Kaepernick and the silent movement that we did uh, before. Um, and uh, now that there's, you know, been a number of people uh, speaking out on this, he's finally speaking out on this now that everybody else with uh, power is. So, you know, he said some comments like, um, you know, he encourages all uh, players, NFL players to speak out and peacefully protest. And he says there's no NFL without African-Americans. Oh, yeah, he also said something about, you know, we were wrong or the NFL was wrong for not listening to NFL players several years ago. So um, let's let's go ahead and start with JB, man. Uh, what, what do you have to say in regards to this? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to stay in my seat on this one, okay? All right. I'm going to say this. If he's serious, let's test him. I don't even care about Roger Cadell comments, to be honest. If he's serious, let's test it. Black people in the NFL, take a knee. Take a knee. Let's protest. You know what I'm saying? Take a knee and let's see what he do. He's he, he talking good now. Why why all this shit going on? Because he want to save face. But let's see what he let's see what he's talking about. Let's take a knee. Why would let's let our NFL players protest? Take a knee, put our fists in the air, whatever they gotta do, and let's see what he say when the, when it's actually hitting. All right, so because because you know when Colin Kaepernick was doing it, he had big words. Um, I don't want to hear shit he has to say until he come out and say he blackballed uh, Colin Kaepernick. Until he come out and say he was wrong, uh, and 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 he was wrong for making people stay in the locker room if they want to take a knee. He was wrong for uh doing the doing all the probably the things he was doing. So. You know, he was just going with majority, but all I got to say is, let's test it, guys. That's all I got to say. Let's test it. Take a knee when the, when that when that national anthem come. White people included in the NFL. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, Jason, what do you have to say in regards to this? Man, the first thing that popped in my head was what I posted on my social media. If we would have just did this in 2016, right, um, this and that, it was a peaceful protest. It was a very thought out peaceful protest. Uh, Colin Kaepernick not only consulted a veteran about it, uh, he looked at multiple different ways to do it silently. And um, they didn't stand behind him. You know, our president changed the rhetoric. And let's talk about why would our president change the rhetoric? Because he had the UFL, he sued the NFL, he won from the NFL. But the settlement he didn't he win. Was, oh, yeah, okay. He, no, he won. But the settlement he got was like a dollar, I think it was. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what he ended up getting. It was some, it's some ridiculously no, low number. So he's always had a, um, he's always had, you know, some animosity towards the NFL, right? So I think that's one aspect of it. And then it's great that Roger Goodell comes out and he makes the statement, right? 
So he says the words that he thinks people want to hear. But let's look at the timing of it. The NFL players released a video. He releases his video later that day. I think their video hit first thing in the morning. His video hit later in the afternoon, right? So I think time is another thing you got to take a look at. Like, is he trying to combat what those players did? Because that video wasn't an NFL video. That was a bunch of African-American players coming together, taping pieces and pulling it together for a powerful piece of solidarity. Um, and then owners. Owners are the biggest part of this. Roger Goodell is a commissioner. He is a face. He is the person that is supposed to be there to protect the shield. The owners are the ones that I want to hear from. Because if they aren't on board, remember who he's employed by. He's employed by the owners to continue to make sure that they make money. So I want to see what the owners have to say. I think uh, Roger Goodell is a piece of this, but when you start seeing owners getting on board, I think that's when we have a true movement. Because even when Jerry Jones went out there and kneeled down, did y'all see his face? Did y'all see his face when they went out to the star on the 50-yard line and kneeled down? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm mm -hmm. just doing this here because, you know, y'all messing with my money, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. But he wasn't mm -hmm. happy. So I think there's a lot of aspects we got to take a look at. Man, fuck the owners. I we mean, need, they, listen, they, listen look, if you don't get them on board, like, this don't mean if, nothing. If Roger Condell don't, if Roger, what's his name again? Adele? Cadell, whatever. Cadell. Cadell. If he don't hire any black fucking people up there at the top, I don't want to hear shit else he got to say. To be honest, if he don't hire more black GMs, look, how many uh black uh even coaches we have in the NFL? Three, four? You know what I mean? Max. Three, yeah, three. If we don't hire any, if he don't hire any black people on his staff, his board, I don't <clears> want to <throat> hear shit he got to say. He just another, so, he just another, he just talking shit because he's he's not giving nothing to a black community or helping our pockets. We just helping his pockets, and he up there talking. So, so, so mm -hmm. again, so, I, I do, I still say he's a piece of it though, because remember. Mm -hmm. He can't he's force racist. owners. He can't force owners to hire. And think about you know even when he tried to kind of pull in a piece of um, a rule change where you know your draft status could improve as you hire GMs and head coaches. You know the owners have to vote on that to make that happen. So again, I'm not I'm not sitting here saying take blame away from Roger Goodell, but I'm saying understand the organizational structure where we think the commissioner is the one that has the power, he does it, it's the owners, because at the end of the day, he works for the owners. Well, one of these owners need to step down and hire somebody black. Um, you know, in, in regards to that, you know, you know, he did say that uh, there's no NFL without African Americans. And, and... Us I being mean, a, lady and a, and a hot dog, man, and, and playing on the field. Now, nah, I want to see some, I want to see some black so, equity. So, so the reality is, is that there ain't no America without African Americans. You know what I'm saying? Um, something that we built. You know what I'm saying? And at mm. the end of the day, the the black dollar, you know, from what I understand, it's like 1.6 trillion dollars, something like that. That's the black dollar. That's what it's worth. Um, you know, when they see things like this happen, they get scared. When they see that we are teaming up to be and to be on the lookout for ourselves at that point. They are being scared, and they'll do anything to keep that black dollar. I don't think Roger Goodell means any of the word that he says, because the only thing he's looking out for is his pocket, and he will do anything in his power, at least from what I believe. He'll do anything in his power to try to keep that dollar and to keep that, that engine running. Uh, I'm going I'm to tell you this. I think in 2016, Colin Kaepernick protest was too peaceful. They ain't trying to hear us unless unless people dying anyway. Or we taking their jobs. Correct. So, Once so, we start doing that, that's when they want to listen. Because they don't want to lose that position of power. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to lose that position of power. You know, and, and that's just the bottom line of that. Um, You know, JB, you can tell me this probably better. And maybe Jason, what kind of people are in the higher-ups in the NFL? Hmm. What kind of people are in the higher ups or NFL? What do you yeah. mean? What 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 kind of people are the owners, and what kind of people Caucasian. is Caucasian? What, what, what age range? 
Oh, you know, you Caucasian. Know, Jacksonville, <laughs> Jack, Jacksonville has uh, a minority owner. Um, Puerto Rican. Uh, Shot Khan. Shot Khan. Mm. Shot Khan is um, Middle, Middle Eastern. Okay. So they have one. But I mean, yeah. even his road to get an NFL team, he tried to buy the Rams a couple of times before he finally bought um, Jacksonville. So even his road to try to get a team was rough. Remember when Carolina was up for sale, P. Diddy and P. Diddy. a couple of uh, investors tried to get in. They made that difficult. Um, they want you to have a white face. Yeah. So, I mean, like, listen, it's um, it's still a club to get into. And, and Goodell, by the way, I looked up his annual total compensation because it matters, $40 million a year. Mm. Um, he going to try to protect that, right? And not only mm-hmm. does he get that $40 million a year, y'all know his uh, health insurance will be paid for for him and his family for the rest of their lives. Because of his his position as the commissioner, but again, the biggest thing that we have to remember <coughs> is he is a small pawn in this whole chess game because the owners are the ones with the power. So I, that's fine; he can make a statement. I still question the timing of it. Um, he said all the right things, but he didn't say anything about apologizing to Colin Kaepernick. He never mentions his name not one single time. They still not ready to swallow that pill. I want to see that pill get swallowed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, that. If they want to if they want to make this if they want to make this right, how they say, mm-hmm. well I want to see I want to see Colin get reparations. Okay? Mm-hmm. Pay him what his total losses and salary was going to be, make mm-hmm. him whole, and then maybe bring him back and let him leave a diversity and inclusion council or something like that. So the NFL can show that they are truly trying to make a change. Yeah. Yeah. And hire him up there where where all the GMs at. I yep. think I think too, um, not only he should get paid for what he lost, or you know, uh that settlement that you was just talking about. He said he got pennies on, right? Oh, that was Trump that got pennies on the settlement. Okay. Colin, he got an undisclosed amount. Um, yeah. Because he had to keep it hush hush to get it. But then you got to think about the workout they tried to do, where they tried to get him to sign that jacked up contract that would make them, yeah. it pretty much was going to allow them to null and void the settlement agreement that they made. It would have been able to take, it would have took away a lot of Colin's protections. That's mm-hmm. why he didn't sign it. And trust me, even when Colin tried to do something right, people still dragging him in the media, you know, and then that contract came out and you saw, you didn't see the media covering it no more. They were like, well, you know what? We was wrong, but we ain't going to say we wrong, so we don't stop covering it. Yeah. So they ain't never really did him right. I want to see, I want to see that happen. Okay. Okay. So if you see Colin Kaepernick back, it's a question for both of y'all that I kind of point out. Um, if you do see Colin, Colin Kaepernick back, let's just say they welcome him back next season. What do you want to see Colin Kaepernick back as? An ambassador or something like that? Or an owner? Or do you want to see him back as an NFL player? Go ahead, JB. All three. So you want to see him like a Bill Russell of the NFL? Yo, all three. I coaching, think he deserves- all that. Not stuff. coaching. Not coaching. Okay. But part ownership. I think a lot of these NFL Into players... play? Yeah, why not? Why not? I don't I think know Le- about that. I think LeBron James could do it. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> We're not gonna talk uh, about LeBron James. Michael this, this Jordan can do it. Whole nother, this is going to a whole nother thing, man. Yeah, well, you know, we're gonna talk about LeBron James and Jordan. But what I'm Boy, saying is, gar- with the guarantee to have that, to have that, uh, when he get out of playing, you know okay. what I'm saying? To have that when he get out of playing. I'm not saying he could, he had to do it at the same time. But I think a lot of these uh players need to start uh putting their money together. And uh, you know, and putting or not even putting their money together, that some of them might have it on their own, and just get and start taking ownership of the NFL. You know, I'm I'm tired of seeing the white leaders up there. I I wasn't a big fan of uh of the protest of Colin Kaepernick. Um, to be honest, I, I feel like I feel like if we're gonna fight, we gotta go for the jugular. You know, what I'm saying they're not gonna learn until. We fight hard, fight harder, and just a, a simple protest ain't gonna do nothing but get your ass kicked out. And that's what I said when it when he started the protest. So I mean, I'm sorry it had to happen. You know, what I'm saying I'm sorry he lost money, but I knew I knew it was gonna happen. You know, what I mean, and now that we have our foots on their neck, 
it's time to keep it going. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be mean, but it's time to start taking ownership of the NFL and stop just playing in the NFL. All right. So, uh, Jason, you know, do you, would you rather see him as a GM or in higher power if he were to get back in the NFL, you know, this season, or would you want to see him back as a player? So, <clears throat> Cam Newton is still a free agent, by the way. Um, so seeing um, Colin Kaepernick come back, get on the roster, I think it, it will be a lame duck um, signing to a team. I don't think that's. I don't think that does anything for what we're trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. As for him being an owner, like that, that's going to be tough. I mean, like as much as I would love to see, it, that's just going to be tough. Like one, he ain't got the money to do that. He ain't got the resources pulled together. That's just, that's one of those ones that's a Hail Mary. And, you know, most of the time we know Hail Marys don't get called. Um, but. Unless it's thrown um, by Aaron Rodgers now. <laughs> listen, well, his <laughs> he, he, percentages are lower than average. Uh, what I do think would be really good is if they brought him back, because he does a lot of social activism, right? If they right. brought him back and made him like a vice president of inclusion, right? So making him. A uh, part of a um, inclusion team, a diversity and inclusion team that would now be able to, you know, a lot of this like Walter Payton Man of the Year and stuff like that. They mm. have it, but I think they should, could organize it in more of a holistic way where they actually could really attack the uh, communities that are disenfranchised, that are uh, underserved with NFL personnel and Colin being able to head that up. Um, when it comes to ownership, I think if you're going to see a black owner in the NFL, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes. Uh, he is the only one that has the star power, and he is going to have two ridiculous contracts. Um, and those contracts are going to be pretty close to NBA money, which will allow him, once he retires with his endorsements, et cetera, to be able to have the money kind of like Jordan did to kind of buy a smaller franchise. I just don't think that's going to be something that can uh, happen for Colin. But I would think you know, creating a position around um, inclusion so he can educate NFL players and uh, communities, I think would be a strong move in kind of righting some wrongs. Let's okay. not forget, let's not forget that Colin Kaepernick went to a super, took a team to a Super Bowl. So He did, but you got to think about how long has it been since he played an NFL game? What, three, He's four still, years? He's still better than probably most of the quarterbacks that's playing right now. So, JB, who, what's his plan to get on the field? Walk me through how he gets on the field. What you mean? <laughs> Just walk me through it. Like, I mean, what team, what team, what roster, how does he move? How does he move up to become a starter? Because right now, all 32 teams are set at starter. Cam Newton can't get a job right now because all 32 teams are set at starter. Cam Newton can't get a job because of uh, injuries. Cam Newton can't get a job because Cam Newton wanted to be a starter, right? So no, the point he I'm came out. Make, he came out and said he don't mind being the back out. He did say that. He said he just wanted to be on the roster. Now I think the Steelers should pick up Cam Newton. You know what I mean? Because I'm a Steelers fan. All right. right well, that that explains a lot right now. <laughs> what, hold on. What you mean by that? Explain <laughs> a lot right now. You mean by that? Explain a lot right now. Yeah, I, I think, I, but Colin, but you got to remember during the coronavirus and all this, they, nobody could get a workout with uh with him to see how healthy he was. And then they, he right, they, look, they pulled in Jameis, bro. Like I mean, like you're dude. not gonna pay, you're not gonna pay Cam mm -hmm. that much. You know, you got starters that's taking real small deals right now just to rehabilitate their image. Cam mm -hmm. gonna be kind of in that same boat, so I feel like if a team wanted to sign Cam, they could. I'm a Jaguars fan. Everybody's mm -hmm. like, y'all should sign Cam. Y'all should sign Cam. It's not gonna happen. Jacksonville is entrenched in Minshew. Minshew. They also have mm -hmm. two number one picks next year. So if Minshew doesn't work out, they can get a quarterback. Um, yeah. So my my thing is when I when I compare, I'm not saying that Cap didn't do work, right? I'm just saying, think about how long he's been out of football, and then let's take a look at the roster. How does he make it to the field? Let, 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 let's, let's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to get into football, but I think he's better than the Dolphins quarterback that they got going on. He's better than Tannehill at the Titans, uh, even though Titans did good. But Tannehill dropped the ball in the playoff game. Am I, you know, he, couldn't, he couldn't even get the ball away out of his hands. 
So I think, that, you know, just adding on the speed that he has, the agility that he has, he'll be a great backup quarterback. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying he has to come and jump to the starter, but just his agility alone to shed tackles, to get away, to learn the playbook. And he already been there before. He'll do better than a lot of these quarterbacks that's already in the NFL. So I think he'd be better on the Steelers than – um. Mm, nah, he Mason will be Rudolph? better. Yeah, he'd definitely be better than Mason Rudolph and Doug Hodges. So – and we don't even have him no more. So good thing. Like, so, come on. So here's my question for you, JB. Do you think Colin Kaepernick coming back to the NFL as a backup is a powerful statement? No. I like that's what you said. You said that it's not a powerful statement, but at the same time, it's still a statement. You know what I mean? Now, I think we need to, you know, another statement is, you know, like I was saying in the beginning, us taking the knee. Us, you know, and and if they start saying something and they, you know, now that, you know, his words is just words, you know, so. So okay. I feel you. I just feel like a more powerful statement is to bring him into the NFL front office, hmm. make him a, a vice president or a president. Put him mm-hmm. over something like, you know, DNI, diversity and inclusion, because then he can work inside in the front office mm-hmm. with not only helping bridge the gap with the whole kneeling protest, but also shaping the way that organization looks at the African American community. Because right, listen, in his statement, he trying to say we didn't listen, we trying to listen now, and we support. Mm-hmm. Well, bring in the person that started it all so he can help show you the best ways to support. Because right now, they want to support, but they're supporting blind. And blind mm. support is just as bad as no support. Mm. Okay. Okay, mm. I like that. I like that. Any uh, final comments or anything, JB? Yeah, man. Uh, start of the season, I want to see some knees and... Um... And I don't, I want to see it all the way to the end of the year. Okay, That's okay, it. okay. Any final comments, Jason? Hey, you know, listen, I, I want to see solidarity. I mean, our, our country shambles right now. We need to come together. And, and you know, nothing brings people together like sports. So uh, let's use one of the biggest platforms in the world to heal this divide and take that gap and fill it in with nothing but love and togetherness. That's very true. Um, I don't really have too much to say in regards to this. Um, I don't really like to talk about Kaepernick that much anymore. Um, but, you know, good segment, you guys, and I really enjoyed it. And I think you guys had some very valid points. Um, before we head out of here, Jason, from the We Are Not Okay podcast, let's go ahead and plug in, you know, whatever you got, social media handles, podcasts, uh, any kind of extracurricular activities. Um, what's going on with you, man? So, you know, listen, the, the We Are Not Where you're from, podcast, by the way? Where you from, you know, by the way? Originally from Melbourne, Florida, but now residing in Columbus, Ohio. But, okay. Uh, our, our podcast or our Facebook live show that we do, We Are Not Okay, really came out of, you know, we were doing a, a comic book show, movie show, and uh, people liked the way that we addressed the content. The George Floyd situation, unfortunately, happened, and a lot of people reached out with, like, are y'all going to do a show about this? So we did it to try to give a voice to the people. We try to keep our show really interactive. Uh, we welcome everybody on it. Uh, we actually have a good mix of not only African-Americans uh, or black and brown people, as I would say, but we also have a lot of Caucasians that are on the show, too. We keep it real interactive. When you make comments, we throw those good comments up there. We try to answer your questions uh, through the chat. And uh, we got a pretty cool platform where even if you make a really good point, you want to talk about it. We'll shoot you a link. You jump right into the show. We'll give you three minutes to kind of speak your piece. And then, uh, you know, we'll put you back there in the comments. So we got some pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, you got three panelists. You got one that's a, a, a vice president for a United Way. Uh, you got myself, who uh, I am a learning specialist, so I focus on adult learning theory. And then we have a director who uh, actually worked on the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So those are your three uh, hosts that are on the show. And then we bring in a bunch of different panelists uh, to get a lot of different views. I mean, we've had a, a naval physician on. We've had, you know, we've had some really uh, cool people on our panel. So just a, a great show to uh, give people a voice. Uh, we also had uh, Mr. Jordan Bethea of uh, Big Hair Illustrations. I want to plug him. So if y'all are into uh, 
comic books. This is a very, very talented brother. Uh, does a lot of great illustrations, great artists. Uh, I actually just commissioned him to do two pieces for me. Um, so you can check him out on Instagram under Big Hair Illustrations. Yeah, and um, what we'll do is um, also we'll go ahead and put that down below in the, uh, in the description and everything. So definitely check that out. Um, so uh, any last words, any final comments or anything from anyone? Nope. I think we're good. <laughs> Okay. Good. All right, all right, all right. So, from Real Name Witten, JB Written, and Jason from the We Are Not Okay podcast, this is Everyday Heroes signing out.